Hey guys, welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. While editing this video, I realized I never did an intro. And while some of you who are on the Bad Luck Garage group page on Facebook kind of know what led in to the beginning of this video, uh, those of you who don't follow me on Facebook don't really know. So basically what happened was uh, I had a couple of the cylinder heads, or well, I had one of the cylinder heads that had a couple of broken off bolts in it. I had to pull out a welder for the first time in my life and get those bolts out. That was kind of, you know, that whole shenanigan was kind of covered on Facebook and on the group page. Uh, but the beginning of this video is just me getting the heads put back on the engine after that. So enjoy. Alright guys, so now that those screws are out, we're going to focus on getting these heads ready to get thrown back on the engine. Now, I don't like dealing with the broken off heads, or broken off bolts. Uh, so guys, I use these on every engine. You can get these on eBay. I'll post a link in the bottom of this video. But these are just stainless studs and uh, nuts. You guys have seen me use them on pretty much every engine. You've seen me put together on this channel and uh, they work great. And they're only about $15, $16. Uh, Brian Campbell, this is the company. You may recognize this card because it's actually, <laughs> I use these so often that I've got the card up on my uh, bench there. It's taped up there as one of my favorite places. So using these, using these studs so I don't have to worry about this crap again. And I just put a little bit of anti-seize on them in case I ever have to take them out because there are some situations where you can't slide the headers onto the studs. In those situations, you have to pull the studs out, you know. Usually not all the studs, just a few of them. So this anti-seize will just make sure they don't bind up in there. Just so you don't have to watch me do all this. I'm going to just screw them in. Uh, what is this? Four millimeter Allen head. Just turn them on down in there until they bottom out. Like that. And then we'll just spin our nut on. That one's ready to go. I'm going to do this uh, on both heads. Get all these put in. Oh, and just so you know, they offer these in 30, I think 32 and 40 millimeter. I found that the 36 millimeter or whatever it is, uh, they're just a tad too short. You can't really bottom, bottom them out and still put like a cast iron manifold on. They're just not long enough. So uh, I just go ahead and order the uh, 40 millimeter now. But I'm gonna get all these put in and uh, I'll be right back. Another advantage of these head studs is it makes it a lot easier. Uh, especially if you're working, you know, on a truck or something where you got to lean way over. Uh, it just makes it easier to put on gaskets because you can just kind of set the gaskets on the studs, then set your uh, manifolds on there. You don't have to try to hold the manifold and the gasket up while you're aligning that first, you know, that first two bolts that you put in. So anyway, we got these in. You might have noticed I switched heads. This is the passenger head. And if you've been on this channel any length of time, you know... I like to tap this coolant passage over here uh, for a 3 8 adapter. The reason I like to do that is because the chintzy adapters that you get for aftermarket sending units and stuff, uh, they're not very sturdy, guys. A lot of the times, they're made out of aluminum. You'll snap them off by accident when you're changing spark plugs, things like that. So what I like to do is go ahead, pull this plug out. Uh, what is that, a 8 millimeter? Allen head that plug I like to go ahead and get these out and take it uh, drill it tap it for a 3 8 NPT fitting eh, I might should have put some uh, there we go I was gonna say I might should have put some break me loose juice on that but anyway uh, I'll drill it I'll tap it for a 3 8 NPT uh, a lot of your aftermarket sending units will be three eighths or they'll be quarter inch and or i mean uh, one eighth and uh you know you can use the stronger three eighths adapter to fit it here 
in the case of chaos theory I'm going to try to use the stock gauges at least for a while until I can afford a Holly dash. So I'm going to want to screw the factory uh, gauge sending unit for the coolant temp into this passenger head. So I'll go ahead and get that done. I've actually showed how to do this in several videos before. So uh, <laughs> I'm not going to bore you guys with this again. But for those of you who don't know, haven't seen my previous videos, we're going to use a 9 16 drill bit. And then if you go to Harbor Freight, this is about the cheapest uh, kit you're going to get that's going to have a 3 8 NPT tap in it. And there's the item number there, 91395. So, yep, 9 16 drill bit. We're going to enlarge this hole right here. And uh, then we're going to run our 3 8 tap in there. Good to go. And the most important thing here, guys, to remember when you're doing this is you don't want to cut the threads too deep, okay? Um, you know, NPT, it's a tapered, it's a tapered thread. So the whole point is, uh, you know, the further you screw the fitting into it, the tighter it should get. So I like to try to run the tap in, you know, just right before halfway. You don't want to get it in too much further than that. And then what I'll do is I just, you know, I'll keep a 3 8 MPT fitting handy. And the idea is I shouldn't be able to run this thing up, you know, more than three or four threads. So when I get the hole to where, uh, well, hold on just a second. You got to get in there, buddy. There we go. Uh, when I get the hole to the point where I can get it, yeah, like right there is good. Uh, I can get it about three or four threads in. That's as far as I'm tapping it. I'm not going to go any further than that because if I do, then I run the risk of, you know, whatever fitting I put in there, uh, not wanting to seal and leaking everywhere. So, yeah, just remember that. But anyway, so we're done here. Uh, I've just got to take and uh, blow all the metal shavings out of the head. And uh, I guess the next thing we're going to do is stick these puppies back on the engine. So here we finally are getting our heads put back on. I want to go over a few things here, guys. What you're about to see me do... Uh, no, you know what? Before before I say all that, uh, the first thing I wanted to say is, this is the torque wrench I keep recommending to you guys. Uh, Harbor Freight has started carrying this. This is a digital torque wrench. It's made by Quinn. And this thing is freaking awesome, guys, because uh, it pretty much does what a $600 Craftsman or I mean, not Craftsman, but Snap-on Torque Wrench does, but it does it for, you know, if you've got a 25% off coupon, like 120 bucks. That's all I paid for this. It does uh, torque to angle and everything, guys. Makes these LS engine assemblies way easier instead of using the little, well, I'm going to show you. This is what I used up until about six months ago when I finally bought this Quinn Torque Wrench. Uh, these things are a pain in the ass to use. If you've ever used one, you know that, but... Here's the thing, guys. Uh, you can get these for about you know ten dollars at the auto parts store. They are a pain in the ass to use, or you can guess at your torque specs. And uh, I don't recommend doing that. But you know, I know a lot of you guys do. That's fine. If you're good at guessing fifty degrees and you know seventy degrees and all that shit, that's fine. Um, I recommend. Uh, I mean, as cheap as this is, guys. If you're going to be building more than one engine, it just it really it pays for itself the first time. It also helps that it's extremely long, so you know you get that extra leverage. Like I used to have to struggle with the breaker bar. I, I don't have to struggle so much with this now because you know it's like two feet long. But anyway, now that that said, there's something else I wanted to go over. What you guys are about to see me do is, you know, what a lot of people on the internet do. I am reusing head gaskets uh, that I've sprayed down with copper seal, and I am reusing our head bolts. Now, <laughs> there seems to be a lot of controversy with this, and, and I just want to throw this out here, guys. You are taking a chance, okay? When you reuse your head bolts, when you reuse uh, head gaskets, you are taking a chance. I would never, ever, ever tell you or make fun, or tell you to use these on, on something you cared about or make fun of you <laughs> for doing things the right way. If you're one of these guys that's out here like dogging people like, oh, you should have just reused your... Yeah, you're wrong, guy. You're, you're totally wrong. 
you sound like an idiot, <laughs> okay? I'm just gonna tell you guys this. You might not expect this coming from me because you've seen me do this so many times, but here's the deal, guys. You've also seen me use new head gaskets and new head bolts um, when it's an engine I care about that I want to last a long time, all right? Here's my, my whole thought process on this with the whole used head gaskets, used head bolt thing. We don't give a shit about this engine, okay? Uh, I don't think this engine's gonna stay together, together very long, what I'm gonna do to it, so I don't really wanna spend any money on it, all right? On the flip side of that, you know, if, if you're, uh, and I've been in this situation before too, you know, if, if you're uh, broke as hell, uh, your work truck's tore up and you just need to get it back together, yes, reuse shit if you have to. But if you've got the money to do it the right way, and you're not doing it the right way, and it's something that you expect to last, then you're just doing it wrong. It's it's that simple, okay, guys? Um, you know, junk engine that I don't care about, yes, I'll do it. Uh, you know, if I'm building a, an engine, like completely rebuilding it, kind of like we did on the DR Nova, um, I'm not going to reuse shit. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Um, and like I said, I, I see all over the internet, it really gets on my nerves, guys. You got, <laughs> you got people doing stuff the right way, trying to shame people who are reusing stuff. And you got people who are reusing stuff, trying to shame people who are doing stuff the right way. And I'm just going to say right now, if, if somebody's trying to do something the right way, and they have the money to do something the right way, and you think you're shaming them, you're not. You look like a damn idiot. Okay, when somebody's doing something by the book, they're buying new head gaskets, new head, but they're doing everything by the book and you're trying to make fun of them. You're the one that looks like a fucking ass clown. Okay, so let's just stop all this shaming shit. You know, everybody stop fucking with each other and, you know, just get shit done. Sorry, if that was a rant, I just I had to get that out of the way. Uh, now, moving on to my junk ass motor that I don't give a shit about. So we're reusing stuff on once again, guys, I'm sorry about that rant, but I've just, I've been seeing a lot of shit on Facebook lately and it's really been aggravating me. You know, you guys should be helping each other, not being dickheads to each other. So anyway, here we go. Uh, one thing I want to point out, since this is a used head gasket, you know, you can't see what says front and back. Well, it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory, guys. You see these two holes here? These are always going to go toward the back. Uh, if you look at the back of the engine, you'll see there's two extra openings here that are not on the front of the engine. So that's the way she goes. So we're just going to set this on here. Grab our nasty ass driver's side head and set it on the dials here. There we go. All right. Now this is an earlier engine, so we got two different size head bolts here. We got the long ones, and each head gets two short ones. The two short ones go in the very ends, there and here, and then the long ones just go everywhere else. Just run them down. There is a torque sequence to these. You start in the middle, this very middle bolt here, and uh, well, I've got my book laid out over here where I can see, but it's like one, two, uh, three, four, uh, no wait, three, four, five, <laughs> six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think. Uh, something like that. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the book, but anyway, uh, you're basically working your way out. Now, it's important to remember these last two, these two short ones on the ends, they're going to get a different final torque uh, than the rest of the bolts. But for now, I'm going to go through, I'm going to follow my sequence, and I'm going to go 22 foot-pounds. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is hit my little button here. Got to set it down, let it calibrate. It's switching over to degrees now. And we're going to use the same torque sequence. We're going to go 90 degrees on all these.
All right, so we got all these torqued down to 90 degrees. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to skip the two on the, or the one on each end here, so the two end ones, they don't go in this sequence. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque all the other bolts, which are the long bolts. They're gonna get another 90 degrees. Then we're gonna switch to 50 degrees, and the two bolts on the end here, they're gonna go 50 degrees. So just follow your torque sequence, but when you get to number nine and number 10, those two are 50 degrees. The rest of them are another 90. We're switching to 50 degrees for our last two here, our two short ones. So we just set our wrench at 50. One. Oh, forgot to reset it. And there's two. All right, that head's on. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. Okay, now that we've got all of our big head bolts ran in, we gotta deal with these little guys on the top. I saved these for last because, well, you're supposed to save them for last. They don't get touched until you've already torqued all your other head bolts down. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through, uh-oh, looks like my coolant crossover is going to be in the way here we'll break that loose so I can kind of swing him out of the way come on now get out of there take these off on both sides here I forgot they do get in the way All right, now, as I was saying, I'm gonna run all these guys down. Uh, they get ran down to 22 foot-pounds. Just start in the middle and work your way out, like, you know, one, two, three, four, five. That's all there is to it, guys. And with these, I'm gonna use my clicker wrench because it is a 3 8 Now, they do make that digital, uh, that digital wrench that you just saw me use. Uh, Quinn does make that in a 3 8 as well, but yeah, I'll just stick with my clicker on the 3 8 stuff and, uh, you know, I just use that mainly for the stuff that's torqued to yield. Twenty-two foot-pounds. Here I go. Heads are on. Guess what we're doing now? Ah, push rods. So I've had these babies soaking. We're just gonna set them all in here. They've been just soaking down in a bath of, uh, shit, I don't even know what kind of oil this was. I think it was, well, if it was in my garage, it was Mobile One, so <laughs> get these stuck in. Next, we're going to put our rocker arm tray on. I'm not sure if it's called a rocker arm tray, but that's what I'm calling it. And we'll put our rocker arms on. Just going to set them in there. These also get torqued down to 22 foot-pounds. 
There is a procedure wherein you rotate the engine to take the pressure off of them and torque the ones down that don't have pressure, yada, yada, yada. What I like to do to make things simple is just go through, torque them all to 22 foot pounds. Then I'm gonna rotate the engine over until the ones that are sticking up right now uh, go down. Then I'll go through and just retorque to 22 foot pounds again and we're golden. All right, so I torqued them. I'm gonna turn the engine over, watch for this one to go down. All right. Pressure's off, let's go through and just hit them one more time. Alrighty, the only thing left to do right now is put our valve covers back on. Um, I'm having to boil my valve cover gaskets because they're not quite fitting. I ordered some generic ones. I do have some Felpros over here, but if I can make the, the shitty eBay gaskets work, then I'm gonna take the Felpros back and get my money back. So I'm gonna go ahead, do this other side and uh, yeah, we'll probably call it quits for this one. All right, guys. I was totally unable to get those cheap eBay valve cover gaskets to work. And that was the second time I tried to order valve cover gaskets off eBay. And the first time, the result was the same, even though it was a different seller. Uh, it's like they just weren't long enough. And they were made out of like a real flimsy uh, rubber. So I couldn't get them to stay in the groove. They just kept popping up in different places. And I tried heating them up with hot water. I tried uh, heating them up with a hair dryer to make them more pliable and stretching them. And the funny thing is, the, the more I heated them up and the more pliable I made them, the worse the problem got because they just got thinner and they didn't want to hold in the groove in the valve cover. So yeah, that was my last attempt at buying uh, eBay valve cover gaskets. So now we got two things that we're marking off the list that we're never going to cheap out on and buy off eBay again. And that is head gaskets and valve cover gaskets. So, you know, if we're reusing them, that's one thing. I couldn't reuse the valve cover gaskets on here because whoever had pulled this engine, they had hit this valve cover with a forklift and pushed it and it actually had bent. Uh, well, if you watch the disassembly video, you know, but two of these bolts were bent and it ripped the valve cover gasket. So I wasn't able to reuse them. So I was, I was kind of forced to buy new and uh, yeah, Felpro ended up being the way to go. eBay was not doing it. So there we go guys, the engine for Chaos Theory is back together, ready to rock, ready to drop in. Um, you might notice I'm not, I haven't put the, the uh, coil packs on here. I'm not going to do that yet because I'm actually thinking about remote mounting the coil packs, even though it's not going to be necessary right off the bat uh, when we do the turbo setup. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do my manifolds, so we may end up having to do remote coil pack mounts anyway. So I might go ahead and uh, you know figure out a solution to that instead of putting them on the valve covers here. So, But that's it, guys. The next thing I'm gonna do is get Chaos Theory in here and uh, start tearing the, the old engine apart, getting it ready to pull. So that's what's next on the agenda, guys. I'm gonna try to make a little bit more room in here. You can see I kinda got a clusterfuck going on over here. 
Uh, I've got some scrap parts and stuff over here in this corner. I need to get out of the way. Uh, I need to do something with these chairs. <laughs> this was actually supposed to go to my daughter. Uh, we weren't able to take it up there when we went. Um, but yeah, <laughs> gotta find something to do with it. But I'm probably gonna tuck the engine over there in the corner with our transmission uh, temporarily and get Chaos Theory in here and start ripping into it. Currently, it does still run, but <laughs> Probably by tomorrow, it will not. So in regards to my little rant earlier, I, guys, I just want to say, like, you know, we're supposed to help each other out. We're not supposed to dog on each other. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, like teasing and stuff, that's fine. But when somebody asks a question on a forum or in the comments on one of my videos or on the Bad Luck Garage group page or, or whatever, I really haven't seen this in the Bad Luck Garage group page. I see it more on some of the other more prominent pages. Um, yeah guys just uh, uh stop talking shit <laughs> i mean that's that's basically the bottom line there is way too much shit talking going on by people who don't really know anything about what they're doing and uh and it just it drives me nuts sometimes no there's nothing wrong if you absolutely have to or if you don't give a shit about the engine like the case here there's nothing wrong with reusing gaskets uh well especially you know head gaskets most of the gaskets on an ls engine are meant to be reused uh, the head gaskets are not, but you know what? Thousands and thousands of people get away with it. Would I do it on a car I was building for someone else? No. Would I do it on an engine that I wanted to last more than, you know, a few months or of, of racing or something? No. Would I do it on my daily driver? Absolutely freaking not, unless it was a situation where I just didn't have the money, but I needed that vehicle running because it was my daily driver. In cases like that, guys, uh, go for it, you know, and, and if, if somebody's in, that's the thing, guys. I grew up dirt poor. I, I've told you guys this before. You know, I'm not poor now. I'm not rich either. Uh, but I've usually got the money to do stuff the right way to a point uh, if it's necessary. But I grew up having to kind of work with what I had, okay? And it nothing pisses me off worse then when somebody who is obviously, you know, they're like, hey, you know, my daily drivers broke down. Uh, you know, I got to get this thing running, you know, blah, blah, blah. What's the cheapest way I can do this? And immediately, immediately, you know, all the guys with deep pockets are on there. Fucking do it right, man. Don't be a fucking poor, you know, calling them poor and and all this shit when the fucker's just trying to get get to work. You know what I mean? In that situation, there's nothing wrong with, you know, reusing gaskets, reusing head bolts, stuff like I mean, you gotta get to work, man. You gotta feed your family, you know? But in the same respect, if you're one of these guys who's half-assed doing stuff just because you think it's cool or whatever, it's not cool, <laughs> okay? Like, you know, if, if you're a guy, you got deep pockets, and you're you're like uh, you got like a $40,000 engine, and you're like, ho, ho, I'm gonna do this just to see what, you know? That, that shit ain't cool either, man. It, I mean, if you spent that much money on your engine, why would you want to reuse anything? You know, I mean, it's it's like a two-way street. Uh, the main thing is just try to have respect for each other. Uh, try to realize that everybody's not in the same situation as you, uh, whether you're the guy at the bottom or you're the guy at the top, you know. There's nothing wrong with doing things the right way. That's why it's called the right way. There's nothing, th nothing wrong with doing things by the book. That's why it's by the book, okay? But in the same respect, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if you're a little down on your luck or whatever, um, or in a case like this right here, you know, where I'm just trying to get this car running, but the ultimate plan is to build a whole entirely different engine. I just want to get the thing mobile, get it swapped. You know, in, in a case like that, there's nothing wrong with just using what you have and not spending money on this because I want to save the money to spend on something better, if that makes sense. But I guess what I'm really trying to say, guys, is, just keep in mind, everybody out here isn't trying to do stuff the absolute dirt cheapest way they can. And everybody out here isn't trying to do things the absolute most expensive way they can. Okay? Everybody's situation is different. I, I hope that's making sense, guys. Like, I'm not trying to piss people off, but at the same time, I am trying to piss you off and kind of make you think about what you're doing. Because um, you're fucking up the communities, what you're doing when you do that shit. That's straight up. But I'm going to quit rambling, guys. <laughs> Bottom line is, we got the engine together. Uh, we're rolling on Chaos Theory again. I know you guys haven't really heard from me in a while, but 
hoping to start doing more regular uploads again. So until next time, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thanks again for watching. Now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.